Good morning, Floss Tube. It is uh, Thursday, March 15th. Um, it has been a long week. Long week. I was hoping to do a video. I normally shoot my videos on Tuesdays because that's the day I have the most time. Um, we've had so much snow. We had a storm last week with a foot of snow and just one snow day. And then we had a storm Tuesday with another foot of snow and this time we had two snow days because it was stretched out so they needed you know they need time to clean when you have that much snow you need time to clean it up so we had two snow days so the boys home the neighbors are over we're outside we're shoveling we're doing things so today oh and friday's a half day because they have um teacher workshops on friday so two and a half days of school this week i am not joking when i tell you I'm a little concerned we'll be in school in July. Um, we've had so many days off this year. I know I think I mentioned we lost five days right around Halloween because we had a power, a big power outage in Maine. Um, some of the schools, some of the homes in our district um, didn't have power the whole week. We actually went back when some were still getting fixed. So we're working on making those days up, but now any snow day we have just piles on. So I, I need to ask what the current last day of school is because it's it's pushing the end of June. And since we're already working so hard to make up those five days, um, it's really hard to make up more days. And they're talking, they're talking, they don't know yet. They're talking about more snow next week. So it's mild enough that even though we get a foot of snow, it's not lasting. I mean, it was bare ground when we got our snow last week and then this snow will melt pretty quickly. Um, so it's not like we're, you know, piled under snow, which we have been in the past. So it's not bad, it's just, we're ready. We're ready for it to be done. So I did get some stitching in. That's what we're here to chat about. Um, so I'll show you that. Last week I was more productive than this week. Oh, and I was sick on the weekend. I had a cold, so we'll see. Um, I pulled out my spring stuff. I have my um, Seasons in Chalk spring. So I most of it I'd shown you guys when I did my 2017 finishes, because a lot of the things I have out right now I finished last year. But there were two um, that I hadn't shown you, so I thought I'd show you those. So this one is... Signs of Spring by Bent Creek. This is the same little clip I use um, for all of them. I got it at Kohl's, it was like $4. Um, so I just stitched this up, mounted it with some batting on, there's the cat, on sticky board. Um, actually, I don't think it is on sticky board because it has the batting. This is a piece of wood, I think it's a five by seven, and I mod podged a piece of scrapbook paper on there, and then I just hot glued that bad boy down and I clip it right on and I can swap them out. So I made, this went quick. So I made one for me, one for my mom, one for my friend. Um, I did all of this season three times. So that one's, now I have no spot to put it. <laughs> it's that kind of day, it's that kind of day. The other one, this is actually a freebie from Doreen Jones, it's on her Facebook page. Every Friday she usually gives out a free design. Um, this was from a couple years ago, but they're all on there, they're in the files. And this is a Vana flat fold. This is my one and only Vana flat fold. Um, I love the way it looks. I love that it stores up so quick and easy. I think if I made them more often, they would be easier. This took forever, <laughs> forever to make. Um, so I haven't made any more, but I think if I worked on it, they would get easier. So that's that one. I have two FFOs this week. Um, one of them I think I showed I had started, and I'm sure the glare, this one has glass. This is Wee Little Stitches, Star Wars A New Hope. Um, this one's for a friend. This is the one that the fabric said it was 14, but it was a little small. <laughs> It was a little small for 14. So it came out a little smaller than I wanted. Um, this is fabric. So I just cut strips of fabric. I cut this one two inches wide. It probably could be a little shorter, um, but my design was kind of small for this frame because I thought it would be bigger. Um, and I just iron it in half. You know, 
windows, full of windows in this room, um, and then use the sticky board and stick that right on top. So that one is done. And then the other one is my um, Fiddlesticks AU Solemnly Swear. I had a hard time finding a frame for this because it's an odd size. So after Danielle Stitcherista did her like unboxing and her framing with Tis the Season, the one with the Cardinals, which I have and I'm hoping to get to this year. Um, I ordered this frame from AmericanFrames.com. Um, it was perfect. I mean, it's exactly the odd size I need it. It came with all, all the stuff. I need to put some paper or something on the back. Um, and I think with shipping, it was like $23. And it's a nice thick frame. I mean, they're not messing around with their frames. So I'll definitely, if I have something odd sized, they were a great resource. Um, I don't have glass on it right now. I could always have a piece of glass cut. But this is a sparkly fabric and it also, I couldn't see it quite as well with on there so so that one's done so I got those two done and I have an FO I finished Fresh Eggs Farm so this is on that piece of fabric that I dyed um, I gave in my last video I told you what I used if anyone's interested this is a 16 Ada so it dyes a little lighter than an even weave or linen um, I used pretty much the the barn is what was called for everything else the truck is weeks Lancaster red everything else is Victoria motto except the white that's just three eight six five um, just to kind of use some of my pretty losses and I swapped some of the pinks for purples um, just because that's what I like and it was a little pink so I made it a little purple so that one's done um, I haven't FFO'd that. I need to do the little top part. I didn't bring the chart down. The Fresh Eggs Farm small one so that I can finish those um, and get those out. So that's done. Then I started, I took a weekend off a couple weekends ago. I had been working on that pretty much steady and I needed just a little break. So I took a weekend off and I pulled out my Into the Jungle. Frosted Pumpkin and this month's was the frog so I got him done this is also that it's fabric I dyed myself I couldn't for the life of me tell you what I used on this one it is it's about as bright, bright green as you can get and I thought what am I gonna use that for so it's perfect for this seems I have him done I worked on the boxes and then I actually got the top done it calls for another line above and below I didn't I couldn't figure out what color I had changed the colors in this so many times because the fabric they just aren't showing up um, so I kind of have darkened there's a lighter pink that it calls for I can't use that it doesn't show up so I use the medium pink and then I picked a darker pink and then I kind of just switched them all up in the top to make it work I love it I think it looks great so I'll need to do <clears throat> the bottom boxes and bottom border the next month is right here um, and I'm pretty sure it's the tiger when we started it they gave a sneak peek and it was a tiger and I'm pretty sure that's what next month is so that'll be nice so then I posted on Instagram you know that I finished that and Misty Purcell luminous fiber arch said oh what are you gonna work on next and I said oh something springy I need a change in my spring colors I, li I lied I pulled evergreen back out. I just thought I'm so close. I'm so close to a finish. I only have the top three. Um, I'd kind of like to get this one done and just out of the wood pile so it's done. So I pulled this out last night. I didn't get a ton done. You know, I just worked on him and then I need to bring the border up. Um, but this shouldn't, if I focus on this one for a few days, I think within a week, easy. I can get this one done. This is on a 16 sage summer khaki is what it was called. To me, sage is green. This is definitely summer khaki. Um, so this one's coming right along. And then I did have a new start in the last couple weeks. Again, I just needed some spring. 
Um, so when she had a sale a little while ago, I had picked up two of the Satsuma Street cities, uh, DC and New York. I'd love to get all the ones I've been to and make them and put them someplace. <laughs> so I started with this one just because of those colors. They're gorgeous. So this is what I thought I would work on, but I thought, oh, I just really kind of want to get that one done. So I have a little, I have a little start. I have one little building and some water and some grass. So this fabric has cat hair on it. This is a piece of Picture This Plus Mirage that I, I bought off Stash Unload. It was the right size. I know it's not centered, but that's because I needed, I needed to use the darker section so that the whites would show up. So it's beautiful fabric. What I didn't order, I, I needed some other fabric, so I'm like, I'm gonna get another piece of that and put it in, put it in the stash because it was so pretty. This is now Mirage. <laughs> also a lovely piece of fabric, also with cat hair on it. Um, this is purple. This is purple and blue. So just be warned, maybe this wasn't Mirage. <laughs> like I said, I picked it up on Stash Unload. So there's a definite difference, um, which actually is great because then if I do another city on this one, they won't look the same. They'll look a little different. So. This one is started. I'll probably get back to that once I finish Evergreen. So that's everything that I worked on. Um, I had a decent, I have some haul. Most of it is, um, what well, was like good finds this week. So first of all, my color and cotton came. I have no idea what I used for this, right? Oop. This is a much prettier spring green. Mine's kind of a like, ah, kind of green. Um, so this is this month's for the colored fabric and it's called Apple Tart. And again, mine's on an Ada. Um, so this is very springy. Find something fun to do on that. But I laughed that it was so similar to that other one. So I got that. Order anything? I had one little order. I needed the fabric, like I said, from um, one, two, three. So I've been waiting to get Summer in Nantucket. I don't know why. I am drawn to all these Plum Streets lately. So my Plum Street stash is growing. Um, so Summer in Nantucket. It had been out and then it was back in, so I'm like, I'm just going to grab it now. And two of the Prairie Schooler Santas that I really like had also been out and were back in. 2011-2010. So I picked those up. <clears throat> um, my son's school has in March um, like a flea market. They call it a flea market craft sale, but it's really a flea market. So we went, off we went, you had to look for all the dinosaur figurines. You never know what kind of goodies you're gonna find. I think we came back with some puzzles for my husband's grandmother a dinosaur figurine, a piece of sea glass shaped like a shell, a book, and then there was a woman there selling mostly scrapbooking, old scrapbooking supplies, a little bit of fabric, and she had some quilt books. <coughs> so, excuse me. So I was overlooking at her stuff, buried underneath was another prairie schooler for 50 cents, 98. So I snapped him up and she had this book, Sand, Sea, and Cross Stitch. Now I'm pretty sure Pam, just keep stitching Pam. I think you showed this and you had this. This is a great book. Um, it has a lot of really nice designs in it. My favorite, I won't do a full flip through. This one's my favorite. So it's just little summer houses. I think it's called for straight. I think everything in here is straight BMC. Um, but I really like that one. I also really like the seagull, the seagulls on the cover. Let's see if there's a bigger picture. And I don't know why, because I am not a fan of seagulls. I know some people, this one's pretty too. That one. 
So this little alphabet with the seagulls, I think I just like the blues. Um, when I worked in Portland right on the water, there were days when you would get out of work and you'd go to your car and it was covered, covered, excuse me, covered in seagull poop. So they're not my friend, but I do like those colors. So there's that one. So then we went, um, I don't really have an LNS. There's a shop in Dammer Scott. It's called Attic Heirlooms. It's not really a cross stitch shop. They have floss, weeks and gentle art, um, some of the like petite treasure braid, that rainbow gallery. They had bought out another shop that was closing. Um, and that woman was pretty, pretty old and she had it a long time. So they bought out all her stock. So they have all her stuff, but they don't, they're not really getting new charts and things in. Um, so we went up just for a drive and I did find Prairie Schooler Johnny Appleseed. They had like some of the months, I mean, they have what the other woman had. So a lot of it is, is the older. Um, I did pay $4. They're not overcharging for things. So this one, this is booklet number nine kick it at old school. Um, the colors I think definitely need to be brightened up. And I actually, what I like about it is these middle two sections. So I thought for, for fall, those middle two sections with some more updated colors. And usually Prairie Schoolers colors I love. I just think these are a little muted. Um, is there a year? 1985 is when this one came out. So I picked that up. Then we were at, my son and I went to Goodwill. I should always take him to Goodwill when I go because sometimes I go and there's nothing. If I go with him and I have zero time to look around because he's antsy, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so there was a whole stack of cross stitch leaflets and he's ready to go and I'm like, but hold on, I'm looking. Um, a lot of them, again, were, were pretty old, but I picked up four. So there were two P. Buckley Moss. I had no idea that these, you see these on Stash Unload all the time, people looking for these. I didn't know these were so old. What was the date? 1984. I thought these were much more modern than that. 1983. I was five years old when these came out. Um, so I picked those up. And then the other ones, I, for some reason, I really like were two booklets, Crates and Sacks and Crates and Sacks 2 um, with these vintage fruit logos that just really appealed to me. And then when I got home, I realized this one is Fresh Main Blueberries. And the other one I really like is this um, Cortland Apples. And I think I like these because even though these are also vintage, they're vintage, 1983. If someone were to design these today, I think they'd look the same. Like I might have to swap some colors up um, because there's just more available now than there was then, but they would kind of look the same. So that's all of that. Um, some shout outs. I've been watching, um, I managed to watch quite a few newer, new to me, new to me people this this last couple of three weeks. Um, like everyone else, I watched Donna Ray, Flannel Jamie's Farm. Um, she has some beautiful things and she's so sweet to listen to. I also watched, finally, um, Kinder Ramblings. That little Prairie Schooler Hedgehog that she did is adorable. Um, Ginger, Gigi and Stitches has started a channel. She starts a few weeks ago, again, it's new to me. Um, her daughter, Natalie, does the sign language to kind of live, live closed caption. It's fantastic. She does such a good job. Ginger's working on her Santa's Village, which I'm like, oh yeah, I want to get to that this year too. I was just tired of houses. Um, so I really liked Gigi and Stitches. And then last night I watched um, Long Dog Stitcher, which again, I've seen quite a few other people watching. I would not for a million years have thought, oh, I'm fairly new to cross stitch. Let's do some giant long dog designs. 
Um, so you go girl because those look great. They really did. Um, a big thank you, Lynette, Homesteading on the Home Front. I mentioned in my last video, she has done for her 1,000 subscriber giveaway, she's designed a series of quilt blocks, like little quilts to make ornaments with or that will go with the Farmhouse Christmas series. And she, in her last video, showed off the last four that she designed. Um, and she's been naming them after floss tubers. And one of them is the pine, the pine needle, I believe, block. Um, so it's the main block. She has named that Pam and Helen's quilt for Pam of Just Keep Stitching. I'm so honored, Lynette. Thank you so much. So I will definitely be pulling that out, um, printing it off. It's a Google file, Google Docs. Um, I had no problem at all grabbing that to save. Um, so that was really, I was really surprised. Thank you so much. I think the last thing we have today um, is the giveaway. <clears throat> I had, um, whoops, last week when I hit a thousand subscribers, um, I told you I had picked up an extra copy of Evergreen. Yours is, yours is less beat up, but it doesn't have a needle in it, so sorry. <laughs> so this is fresh in the bag. <coughs> And I asked people what would their what would the out of print chart they most wanted back from Per Schooler be? So I think it's Hoffman, Hoffman distributing. You've got to reprint button up. Because <laughs> everybody, not everybody, a lot of people want button up. That was the most mentioned was button up. Um, Village Green, which is one of the ones I would like to see, was also mentioned a lot. Um, Woodland Santas, I think because like Caroline is doing them and they're getting a little more hard to find, that one was mentioned a lot. Um, another one that I would love to see that someone else had, um, I think it was Melissa Eggleston. Um, she got one, she said, in a Craigslist haul and I was like, oh, I'm so jealous. Um, Garden Beasties. They're the little, they're little circles with the bugs on them. They're adorable. Hi guys. I apologize. I had a major sneezing fit when I was trying to do my, my winner. So Prairie Schooler Evergreen. Um, like I had said, I had 60, I might not have said, I don't know where I have to edit this. So I had 60 people, um, say that they were interested in this chart. So, um, random.org number, number 14. I have to trust me there. Number 14, um, which was Jennifer Grimes. Boop. So Jennifer, I will get in touch with you um, and get that out to you. So maybe you can have it done for Christmas this year too. Um, that's about it for today. Um, thank you to all the new subscribers I've had. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope spring comes soon. <laughs> And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. I swear I don't make this up, you guys. There must have been some serious birds out there. Were there some birds out there?